Awesome. Uh, all right. Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Um, that song, of course, is pretty popular right now um, for for good reasons. Uh, so uh, the boys and I just went to a Black Lives Matter um, march and rally the other day, and um, it's been on my mind a lot anyway. But I um, was thinking about everything, and then my oldest son came to me and he said, "Hey, do you know?" Machine Gun Kelly did a cover, just did a cover of um, this song. And I was like, Machine Gun Kelly? Do you mean the tw 1920s gangster? <laughs> I'd never heard of him. I know some of you probably laugh at that and be like, where has this guy been living? Um, I, I just don't really know that world. I don't know a lot of newer musicians. Um, anyway, so I was a little skeptical. I was thinking... You know, the original of the song, the Rage Against the Machine original, is so great. Like, how is anybody going to handle that? Um, I feel like I've seen other covers that are pretty good, like Brass Against the Machine does great covers. Um, anyway, I really enjoyed that. I thought it was great. I think that um, they nailed it. Um, uh, I guess that drummer is supposed to be pretty, um, pretty good. 
Um, but all of that was just tight. And uh, the timing, obviously, was great. I sure wish we had a Rage Against the Machine right now to sort of um, help us focus some of our thoughts uh, musically. <laughs> um, you know, of course, it used to be common during the Vietnam era to have um, anti-war um, songs. You know, almost everybody did that then, but um, I don't know. We, we were doing some protesting, but I was thinking about... Um, Killing in the Name of by Rage Against the Machine and thinking about how, I, I believe, somebody correct me on this if I'm wrong, I, I'm very likely wrong, but I believe that was written in, somewhat in response to um, the Rodney King beating, oh, what was that, 91 or something. And thinking about police brutality um, and how it, it's impacted communities and everything. And Rage Against the Machine was writing these lyrics almost 30 years ago. Man, here we are with things uh, just as bad or possibly worse in that area. Um, so, you know, obviously we need a lot more than a good song. <laughs> um, but, you know, social media, like YouTube, like what we're doing now, and but all types of social media and um, all sorts of different webs and fingers that go through our culture and our society can make a big impact. Um, so it's it's nice to sort of share music together, um, especially music of this kind of power. Um, you know, there aren't a lot of lyrics to that song, um, but um, some of those who work forces are those who burn crosses. So, uh, sure, yeah. That's right. There is a lot of uh, racism in, in police forces. There's also a lot of wonderful police officers out there, of course. Um, I, I've been sort of thinking um, about how many police officers maybe hunt. You know, hunt deer and whatever, rabbit and squirrel. I don't know what people hunt. I'm pretty opposed to hunting. Well, I am opposed to hunting. And I wonder, like, gosh, what does that do to a person's mind if they spend their weekend going out and killing animals, and then they strap in their gun for their, and get in their police car for their work week or whatever, their, their next shift, and how the cycles of violence um, sort of kind of can impact us in ways that maybe we aren't thinking about. I won't go into all that now. I have strong opinions about that, but anyway. Love this song. Love this uh, this musician. I, I don't know any of his other songs. I know nothing about him, um, but this cover is fabulous, and and it means a lot, especially right now. But frankly, it's this police brutality stuff has been going on as long as we know, and we hope it can end as soon as possible. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for watching. Stay safe.